be joining us. So right here we have this row right here. If y'all can throw y'all hands up. We got, we got all the students, all the students. So before we uh, get into worship, we just want to do a little bit of icebreakers, you know, you know, just to set the tone, you know, just to get a little loose and get comfortable. So uh, Taylor will introduce us to the first icebreaker. One second, technical difficulties. You gotta get her phone. Well, while we're waiting, let's make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah! Come on! Hallelujah! So much. It's so beautiful to see so many young faces and even younger faces uh, here at church today. Thank you all for your patience. Give it up for Jesus. Okay, so for the first icebreaker, we're going to just do something something small. So we're going to do a competition between the three universities, right? So we're going to introduce Rochester first, and then we're going to see who makes the most amount of noise. Y'all ready? Amen? Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Y'all got to make I know it's noise. early, on, but y'all got it, okay? So, uh... Let's go, uh, Rochester University first. Make some noise, make some noise. Okay. All right. Okay, Rochester, yeah. All right, we got Eastern Michigan University. Make some noise. Okay, that wasn't bad. That was okay. Now, you know, this is the university I go to, you know. We the saints, you know. So I take great pride in my university, so if everyone for Siena Heights could just go crazy. Siena Heights University, come on, come on, make some noise! Yeah. And Siena definitely won. All right, y'all, so we're gonna start with an icebreaker. First, we're gonna introduce ourselves. My name is Taylor. I am the president of uh, COMPEL at Eastern's campus. Um, I'm so glad to be here with you guys and worship with you guys. I believe that God has something in store for each one of you, and I'm so excited. My name is Maximo, and I'm the president for COMPEL at Siena Heights University. And, you know, I'm just glad to, that y'all are here. And then I know it'll be a, a blessed evening and a blessed time with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. All right, y'all. So we need two people. So we're going to do the first icebreaker is finish that scripture, okay? So we need two brave souls, one from Siena, one from Eastern. All right. Or I'm going to select somebody. Come Volunteer on. yourself. Don't make us pick. Come on, y'all. All right, Aaron. Give it up for Aaron, come everybody. On, yeah. Come up on Come on, give it up, Let's give go. it up. Give All it right. up for Amir. Give it up for Woo. Amir. Yeah. All right. So if y'all can stand right here, right here. All right. So again, that's finished that scripture. I'm going to say a portion of a scripture, and then it's your responsibility to finish the scripture, okay? All right. And the most accurate person wins. Y'all ready? Okay. So this is Philippians 4 and 6 from the NIV version, and it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. What's the next part of it? In spirit and truth? I don't know. <laughs> not quite, not quite. That's why you got to read your Bible. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. And the peace of God. Which transcends human understanding. Oh, okay, finish it, finish it. With you. Will guard your what? Will guard your heart and your mind. And what? Spirit and truth. In who? And so, in Christ Jesus. Yeah, there we go. Jesus. All right. <laughs> All right. So Aaron won. Aaron. He needed a little bit of help, but that's okay. Give it up for Aaron. Y'all make some notes for Aaron. Yeah. 
All right, so the correct answer is, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, okay? All right, we're going with the next person. I need two other people. It doesn't have to be from Siena or Eastern. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Okay, so I'm just going to say the scripture, and then whoever knows it, just raise your hand and shout it out, okay? All right, so this is Luke 14 and 23, and it says, Then the master told his servants, Go out to the roads in the country lanes and... Not quite, not quite, not quite. It has to do with our name. Yeah, 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 yeah. The correct answer is compel them to come in so that my house will be full. All right, all right. This is the uh, last one, okay? Romans 8 and 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that... What's the next part? Come on, y'all. Y'all reading your Bible? <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Anybody out here want to help them? Any of our, our seasoned saints? <laughs> okay. Um, the correct answer is he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, That's give up. it up for our first icebreaker. Good job, y'all. Yeah. All right, we're going to do the song. You want to do the, the, the you guys have Bible characters? Just let it skip it. Let's no. Mm -mm. No. Um, oh, you want to do the song? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we got one more icebreaker for you guys. All right, so next one, we got uh, finish those lyrics. So we got a couple songs for you, and you just got to finish the lyrics in Jesus' name. Okay. So y'all got to guess the lyrics for this one. We're about to play right now. Y'all just raise your hand if y'all know it. I would sing it, but that's not good. Okay. Anybody know that? <laughs> All right. Okay. Who said that? Raga. All right, Raga. Good oh, job. Oh, come on, Raga. You're not a student. <laughs> not just saying. All right. We're going to go to something that I feel like all of us should know. If y'all don't know this, come on, y'all. You that think that gospel music has gone too far. You think we've got too radical with our message. Well, I got news hey. for you. Now you know. Glory, glory. Hey. Come on, y'all. Hey, come on. Lately, I've been going through some things. Come on, y'all. Come on. Down. Come on. <laughs> Round. All right, what's the next? <laughs> it's a what? Hey, it gives me what? All right, up to. And when I think about your goodness, it makes me wanna. Hey, give it up for them. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, come on. Yeah. 
All right, we're going to do one more, one more, one more. You are so beautiful. Do y'all know this song? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right. All right. I feel like this is for the ladies. I feel like y'all know this. Okay. What y'all say? Forgive me, y'all. I know y'all know this. True to your words, you let me catch my breath, get some rest, and send me on. Just like a bird, your fountain washes me. So Do y'all know it? Y'all don't know it? I know the ladies do. Okay, what's next? Okay, Holy Spirit moving with you, there's no... Come on, y'all. All right, thank y'all. Thank you so much. Make some noise, make some noise. Call it Sunday! Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will bless. Come on. Y'all ready to worship this morning? Come on. Y'all ready to worship this morning? Here's what we need you to do a call and response, we just need you to respond to us. Is that all right? Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. All right.
I won't let the rocks cry out for me. One more time. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you glory. We exalt your name. 
because this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad. Thank you, Father, thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 
this morning. Lord, 
that's my testimony. Keep on making ways for me. You kept me alive, that's my testimony. Oh. Keep on making ways for me. For everything. For everything that you promised, I know I ain't seen. For everything that you. For everything that you promised, I know I ain't seen.
children crying, say, manifest our The sons and daughters of God are yearning, we're groaning, we're petitioning, say, the Morgan power, the Morgan spirit, say,
Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you that you are Yahweh, that you are Rafa, that you are Elohim, that you are Shaddai. We ask that you manifest yourself in everything that you are today, God. Although we are here gathered together with many problems, you're the God that can solve every last one of them with one word. So, Lord, we, oh God, shift our focus on you today, oh God. You are the healer. You are the miracle worker. You are the strengthener. You're the guide today, Father. No matter how far we left, no no matter how far we've gone away from you, you're always calling us back to you. And so today, Lord, in this atmosphere, Lord, we thank you that, that you are here. And we receive your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Breathe on us today, Father. Breathe on us today, God. Breathe on us today, Father. Breathe on us today, oh God. Let there be a fresh wind, a fresh anointing, oh God, a fresh fire, oh God. Renew strength today, oh God. Peace in the name of Jesus upon your people today, Father. Yep. Come on. Your breakthrough is in your shout. Your breakthrough is in your praise. Your breakthrough is in your thanksgiving. Ah, even if you feel heavy, he said, take my yoke, which is easy. My burden is light. In exchange for that, I give you praise, Jesus. Come on. Whatever you need, whatever you're looking for, he is here in the room. He is in the room. Manifest yourself to us, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we call on you. Oh God, revive us again. Fill us today, oh God. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Fill us with fire today, oh God. For you are a consuming fire. You saturate our hearts, oh God. You restore us. You renew us. You revive us. You bring us back to your original design. we don't serve a God that is man-made. Anybody feel Jesus in the room? Anybody feel Jesus in the room? If you don't, whatever type of feeling, that's Jesus. Whatever type of fresh thought, whatever peace that came over your body, that's Jesus. So Lord, we thank you that you that you take us higher. For it is our desire to know you, to become more personal with you. We don't have the answers. Come on in. As we close this prayer in this time of worship, can we seal it with our best praise? Okay, that's good. That's good. But is he good? Or is he great? Come on, that's great. That's a great praise. Now, some of y'all stop that great. But is he exceptional? If he's exceptional, give him an exceptional praise.
this Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. for a time of reflection, prayer, and communion as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you. said he skipped death by an act of faith and some of y'all about to skip some things in your life by an act of faith what's gonna come on somebody else won't come on you you're about to skip it lord have mercy you're about to skip some things there's some things meant for your life that the devil has planned for you but it won't come your way Someone say hallelujah. <laughs> that was a phenomenal Easter video. Can you raise your hand if you're going to be here on Easter? Hallelujah. All right. Perfect. We want to make sure we fill our balcony next Sunday for Easter Sunday. Praise God. So all your friends, all your family, your neighbors, we want to see them here. I have one quick additional announcement. Um, everybody say regroups. We have our monthly regroup meeting this Wednesday. Somebody say, this Wednesday. And it's going to be right here at the church at 6.30 p.m. Regroups is for everybody. We want you to be there or be square. Um, regroups is when we come together with our families. We'll worship together, break off into different rooms and throughout the building. We'll eat together. And uh, we'll just really do life together. We'll celebrate together, maybe cry together, and just simply be there for each other. Um, it's College Sunday today, and when, when I was in college is when I got saved, when I met Jesus, and it was the people who were closest to me at my college, at Siena Heights, um, go Saints, that the people I was closest to at Siena Heights made me who I am today. And I wouldn't be here without them. They're the ones who led me to Pastor Claude and Pastor Rosie. I wouldn't be here at the church today if it wasn't for the people I was connected with. And uh, that is what Regroups and College Sunday is all about today. So we want to see you at Regroups this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. right here at the church. If you are in the Adrian area, can you say, hoo, hoo, hoo. So if you're in the Ipsy area, we will be having regroups here on Wednesday. If you're in the Adrian area, we will be having regroups at my house on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. So for 
And if you need any more information, there will be emails and social media posts going out this week. Or if you need more information, you can come talk to me today. If you have my number, send me a call. Send me a text. Give me a call. And we will get you in the right place. Hallelujah. Well, if you could put your hands together for Pastor Darius again. We have some more in store here at Restore. That, that right. Well, good job, man. All right, we are better together. Say we're better together. Amen. So, uh, this part of College Sunday, as I mentioned, we have been raising money, funds, uh, to be able to bless our college students. Okay, and so, if you've ever been to college, you know what the college life is like. And so, we definitely understand that. And we want to make sure that, you know, what we did, what we were doing, um, this was for, for benefit to not only get students to come to church and hear the word, but build community and also let them know that the church cares and that we want to see them succeed in every aspect of their life in Jesus' name. And so what, we, what we're going to do is we have a scholarship giveaway. Come on, shout. Come on. If I can get my two... My, my people from the Connect team, come on up. Give it up for them, Maddie and Micaiah. All right, now, this is, the, this is the time where, again, as I mentioned, all you have to do is be in the seat, and you can get your name called, all right? And so we've been able to raise $4,000 for the students, and so... What we're doing is we're dispersing them in increments of 500. So that means that quite a few students actually get to get blessed today. And so I did pick up already a lucky raffle. I'm going to start off, okay? Um, and then after that, what we're going to do is, y'all didn't know I snatched them. No, y'all didn't know I grabbed the raffle already? All right, I'm going to do one, and then you all will do one. So she's representing Sienna. He's representing Eastern. Rochester, and we got some Washington in the building too. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I got my first raffle. I'm gonna call off. And so when I call your name, when I call your name or when I call your number, please stand and come to the front. We want to acknowledge you. We want to make sure we get your name so that we can make sure we have that for you. All right. So the first winner is four eight three one two six zero. Who is that for? Hey, give it up! <laughs> Quistella! All right, all right, that's cute, that's cute. Your turn, Maddie. You can read it off. It's the doctor, y'all. 4831249. Woo! DJ! <laughs> Yeah, give it up for four eight three one two four two. Who we got? Who we got? Y'all know how to read? Oh, there it is. Somebody. Did y'all put y'all names in there too? Okay, good. One, two, three, four. Miss Wong! We got the Sienna Heights basketball team in the house. Oh, yeah, she was Sienna. Yeah, yeah she's Sienna. Yeah. That's her. Get in there. That's hard. Okay. All right. Four, eight, three, one, two, three, eight. We're gonna read it again. I know somebody got the ticket. 4831238. All right, let's, 
Two, six, two. All right, let's give it up for him. Rochester is on the board. Amen. Four, eight, three, one, two, four, three. Emmy. Seven. One more, one more. All right, drum roll, pre please. Come on. Four, eight, three, one, two, four, one. Yeah. Read it one more time. Hey. <laughs> awesome. All right, y'all can just turn, face the audience. Let's give it up for our scholarship recipients. We're grateful, we're glad that you are here. You may go back to your seats. In Jesus' name. Thank y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up one more time for those college students. All righty. And so what we're going to do is just increase time. Alrighty, and so for the sake of time, I know that we're behind schedule a little bit. I believe that we are, this, this, well, we get fed the word 100%. And, um, and I think that we understand the importance of giving. Go turn your attention to Luke 638. Just want to share this word with you. And then again, those who have completed those connect cards, make sure that you hand it to put it into the bucket. But the Bible says in Luke 638, it says, Give and it will be given to you. You may stand to your feet. I'm going to read the word. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure, they measure, you use, it will be measured back to you. And I just want to encourage you that you cannot cheat God. We can't. And what I'm talking about is not more for not not more so how much you have, but the quality in what you give to him. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful, cheer, cheerful giver. And so as we do this custom of giving our tithes, our offering, alms, whatever we want to do, give over and above what's the, the, the minimum, which is tithe, uh, we just want to make sure that, as the word says, that number one, we're doing it in the right posture. And most importantly, the Bible says that when I give, the same measure that I give is going to be given back to me. But God is a God that would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think, dream, or even imagine. He will exceed your expectations if you give with the right posture. Amen. And so the, we've, already, we've already got rid of and ruled out, hey, where the money going, that don't matter. Number one, you're doing it because you honor God. And the scripture tells you. And so as we give, make sure that we prepare our hearts. That God, am I giving my seed and I'm giving my tithe? I understand the principle of sowing and reaping. And I believe that by faith that all my needs will be met in Jesus' name. And so I'm going to pray over your seed right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. Father, we thank you that we are cheerful givers, that we are a giving church, that we decide that we're not just going to do the minimum, but Lord, we want you to exceed our expectations. And so today we put our faith in our giving. And we believe that because of that, Father, that there's nothing in heaven that will be locked up for us. 
And so, Lord, we decree this confession over our lives that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above only and not beneath, for we are lenders and never borrowers, and we are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And if you believe that your seed is going into good ground, and you believe the word of God, give God some praise for your seed. Amen. Amen. So you may give your seed if it's paper, you've got the buckets. There are other options and ways to give, as you see on the screen. I won't read them all, but definitely want to create the opportunity for you to experience what heaven has for you. And so the next thing is, you may be seated. Next thing we do have a music selection by our college choir. Hey, give it up for them. clap praise in that. One more time.
you love him? Don't you know that he's wonderful? Come on. Don't you know that he's gracious? Don't you know that he's a loving father? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Our toes are ready right here. Toes one more time, again, again. All praises be yeah. to the King of Kings and the Lord our God. Supremes, y'all ready?
Everybody ready to eat? Everybody say eat. <laughs> so we have the honor and privilege to have our pastor teach us today on this beautiful college Sunday. So we college students, if you haven't heard, strap your seats, get ready for a ride. We're going to destiny in Jesus' name. And so without further ado, can we give God praise for our pastor, Pastor Paul Revere. <laughs> Come on, let's give that praise, that glory, and that honor to Jesus today. Come on, shake yourself today. Hallelujah. Slip your hands up today. Father, we thank you for anointing these lips of clay. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the great thinker, the great teacher, the great searcher of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And Father, that's what we're here for. We're not necessarily here to hear from any man, including myself, but we're here to hear from heaven. Father, anoint me today to release words that would move heaven's agenda into the earth realm. And we thank you for it today. We thank you for healings. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for increase in prosperity. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord upon every single person that is under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, if you believe it, give God your best praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do better than that. Give God your best praise today. Hallelujah. To God. Now, before we have a seat and we make our declaration of faith, uh, we just want to be mindful. Uh, Pastor Darius uh, and his lovely wife, she's, she's pregnant, right? So we just want to give them an awesome hand clap for uh, College Day today. Fascinating. Amen. Come on, let's do better than that, y'all. Come on. I remember when in Adrian... I called you down into that little small raggedy office of mine and I began to share the vision with you of Compel Campus Ministries and to see that you're in how many colleges right now? Three colleges. Come on, give them a hand clap. Amen. And what amazes me is that even though you're not physically in the schools now, uh, you, you still have an indelible mark that cannot be erased. You're there through other people that you have discipled. So we just honor you. We thank you for submitting to my wife and I and the vision of the house and having a heart to compel them to come in. Amen. Amen. Pastor Darius, everyone. Amen. All of his team, Adam and, and all of them, Max and amen, all of them. <laughs> Praise God. I'm just so honored today to be able to bring the word. Uh, before we sit down, there's two very important, three important announcements. Um, uh, one of our dear sisters lost her father, uh, one of our spiritual daughters, um, and she's in the room today. And we want you to know we've been praying for you, Jessica. Amen. And um, we're, we're praying for you. We also had our dear sister. Um, she's in the room today. Uh, Coach Connor, uh, he transitioned and went to be with the Lord Wednesday. And uh, we just want the church uh, to know that we're praying and we want everybody to know we're praying um, for sister. Can you raise your hand so, you, so people can see you? So he went home to be with the Lord and we want to continue to pray for the family. And uh, we're definitely going to miss uh, Coach Connor. I think what I'm grateful for the most is, is the fact that he was Monday. He was in turn challenge and Tuesday he was here at prayer. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. 
Amen. He was submitted to the vision of the ministry. And we know on this side of heaven, there's going to be grief because we'll miss him, all of us. And we cannot imagine what you're going through and what your family is going through and what his uh, family is going through. But we want you to know that we have hope in Christ. Amen. We know that we'll see him again. Amen. Amen. And then uh, Brother Bradley passed. Uh, he was facing some health issues. So if you're watching Sister Bradley, uh, my wife and I will call you immediately following service. But um, he passed last night. So uh, we want to just be mindful to keep everybody in prayer. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Somebody give the Lord a hand clap today. Amen. Amen. My daughter, Vicki, she's always like, Dad, you got you to wear the glasses and stuff. You know, you look good with that. It's, I just feel funny with them. <laughs> Can y'all raise your Bible up? We're going to make our declaration of faith and we're going to dig right into the word of God. Have you been blessed so far? Amen. I just need 30 minutes. I need 30 minutes of your heart. And we're going to pour some things into you. Say, this is my Bible. This is how my heavenly father speaks to me. I am who he says I am. I have what his word says I can have. And I'm able to do everything. And I mean absolutely everything that the word says that I can do. Now open it up. Say, today, as I behold in the mirror of the living word of God, the image of God, the likeness of God, I am changed in Jesus' name. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I may have come in as a caterpillar, but before I leave, I'm going out as a butterfly. I might transform right in the middle of this service. So you better let me loose so I can spread my wings. Come on, give the Lord your best raise as you're having a seat today. You may have a seat. Looking at what's going on here today at the church, just, just thinking in terms of the vision here of restoration of the hearts of the fathers back to the children. I had an incredible five services in California with pastors Mark and Kendra Graham. Uh, although I missed my wife and I missed my dog Lola. And then I miss my kids and my grandchildren. We had an incredible, incredible service, uh, five services there. Uh, more than 150 men came to the altar. And um, uh, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit was present there as we taught the word of God. We dealt with the actual root of what's happened in society rather than just dealing with the fruit. Amen. So we dealt with the root. Amen. Y'all ready for the word today? Amen. Of course, we're going to be continuing this series called Fourth Dimensional Living. Somebody say Fourth Dimensional Living. I'll explain that my aim today is to get to what is called the principle of service. But as I was uh, just going back over and musing back over my message, there's some things that I need to deal with before I get to the principles because I need to make sure you clearly understand how this kingdom functions. Amen. So I want you to look with me in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, uh, the foundation scripture here. And we're going to read it in two different translations. So we're going to read it in the King James versions first, and then we're going to read it in the Amplified Classic. And what I would like for you to do on the count of three, I want you to read them together with me. One, two, three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's read the second one. But seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given you besides. Now, the point that I'm bringing out, and I brought it out two weeks ago, and, and let me just say this. I almost forgot, but I don't want to forget. Pastor Rosie tore the place up last week. Amen. The carpet, the carpet was on fire. <laughs> we want to bring out the point that we are sons and daughters. Somebody say, I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. Now, here's the part that you want to get. You and I, as we are understanding who we are in Christ, that we have been recreated in the image and likeness of Jesus in Christ Jesus, we have the ability to live above the limitations of this natural world. As a matter of fact, we are supernatural to the core. 
Um, there is a verse in Galatians chapter 4, verse 31, the Amplified Classic. If they have the ability, give them a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> the reason why I want you to see these scriptures so that you'll see that I'm not just teaching my personal uh, belief system or my personal mental assent to the text. I want you to see that we're teaching the Bible. The Bible says here that brethren, we who are born again, raise your hand if you're born again. Amen. We are not the children of a slave woman, the natural, but we are the free. What is the next words? The supernatural. So you want to point at yourself right now. Say, I am, I am supernatural, supernatural to the core. Come on, let's get that in our belief system. Say, I am supernatural to the core. Now, see, we, un we should understand this because today in society, I mean, even in the secular world, in the secular entertainment world, there is this idea that, you know, we are supernatural. So you see all these movies on vampires. You see these movies. It's actually a series out called The Supernaturals. You know, you see all of these people like Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk, right? Amen. Wonder Woman, different people like that. Green Lantern. Amen. Right. Batman and Robin. So we know innately within us there is this potential to be greater than how we've been trained to believe. Amen. We know there's something supernatural on the inside of each and one of us. And when we get born again, there's these limitations and these I call them deadlocks. Right. There is these uh, impasses in our thinking that we have to break through so that we can fulfill the potential. Right. And accomplish the purpose that God has created us all for. Right. We all have a reason for existence, every single one of us, right? And whenever God thinks about you in terms of your, of your personal life, in terms of your marital life, in terms if you're single, in terms of your family life, in terms of your occupation, in terms of your business, whenever he thinks of you, he never thinks small concerning you. There is nothing small about who you are in Christ. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Just to finish up this introduction to help you understand, most of the time when we reference the life of Jesus, Max, we reference him as Savior, right? As Savior, right? But it leaves a hole in our spirit because we know he did not come to show off. He came to show us. He came to show us what? How we are to live as born again, spirit filled, supernatural beings. Right? So every time Jesus healed somebody, that was him reflecting who the Father is or what the Father's will is. Every time he delivered someone, that was him reflecting who the Father is or what the Father's will for humanity is. Every time he supernaturally blessed somebody or provided for someone, that was Jesus reflecting who the Father is or what the will of the Father is. That's why in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus says, I only only do those things that I see my father do. So he was so close to the father that he saw how the father wanted to respond or react to any given situation. And then he responded and he reacted in like manner. Are you following what I'm saying? But here is the part that we got to get up under our belt. In John chapter 14, verse 10, Jesus is saying, it's not me. It's the father in me, he does the work. Somebody say, it's not me. It's the Father in me. He does the work. Now, John 14, 12, Jesus says, don't get caught up in what I'm doing. He said, if you believe on me, these works shall you do and greater because I go to the Father. So now he done put the ball in our court as believers. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I am supernatural to the core. In our foundation text, the Bible teaches us that if we would seek the kingdom, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule of God through man. The kingdom of God is the realm of heaven. Watch this. Infiltrating or repossessing the earth. The kingdom of God is the royalty of God being exemplified through man. The kingdom of God is God's reality. 
how God sees things, how God desires to be in the earth. That's the kingdom of God. That's why the Amplified says it's God's way of doing. Somebody say God's way of doing. Come on, say it again. Say God's way of doing. Right? So Jesus said you and I as born again believers, we have to aim at and strive for first of all how God operates. What is his modus operandi? And once you discover how God operates, you are to operate like that. Yeah. Operate like that. Yeah. Operate like that. Yeah. And when you operate like that, everything that other people are dying to get, it will be added to you without toil, without tire, without exhaustion in your mind or in your body. Come on, somebody say amen to this. So we live in this three-dimensional universe. And this three-dimensional universe was never meant to be a impasse to prohibit us from manifesting God's will, God's purpose that is in heaven, in the earth. As a matter of a fact, when Adam was in what was called the Garden of Eden, somebody say Eden. Eden, by definition, means voluptuous living. It means fullness. Eden was a spot in the earth where heaven and earth collided. It was where the man had communion and intimacy with the father and was able to take that which he saw in heaven and then convey that in the earth. That is called original intention. And see, you and I have to look at the Bible from the blessing and not from the curse. Because once you got born again, you are no longer under the curse. Although the curse may be around you, the curse is not supposed to impact you. Come on, somebody say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap. The issue is, is we have to know how to work the system. You have to know how to work the system, right? You have to know how to work the system. So this is a three-dimensional, limited universe governed by time, space, and matter. But when Jesus came into the earth, he operated out of what we call 4D. He didn't function from 3D. He functioned from 4D, right? So 4D, we're going to define that as the unseen, the supernatural, or heaven's perspective. That's how Jesus functioned. Two things. He functioned like he was in heaven while he was in the earth. Secondly, he functioned in heaven and earth simultaneously. When he walked on water, that was heaven's agenda. So he walked on water. When he healed the sick, that was heaven's agenda. So he healed the sick, right? When cast out devils, that was heaven's agenda. Matter of fact, he would walk into the presence of people that was demonically oppressed, Max, and they would recognize him before the Jewish people would, before the believers would, before the Pharisees would, before the Sadducees would. You hear me, Mike? They would recognize his authority. They were like, oh, you are son of God. You have come to destroy us. Stay away from us. Why? Because they recognized that he was carrying a new system on his shoulders. He was carrying a new government on his shoulders. That's what Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says. Just write it down. It says, Jesus, that government will be upon his shoulders when he came. So he was carrying heaven's mindset heaven's agenda, heaven's way of doing things. So when he came into the earth, anything that the Lord Jesus saw that was not aligned to heaven's perspective, he would alter it so it looked like heaven while he was in earth. But he said, greater work shall you do. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. This is the gospel that Jesus taught. I was listening to a speaker he speak yesterday, and they defined the gospel as Jesus dying for the sins of mankind. That's not the gospel. That's what he did. He died for the sins of mankind. And not only did Jesus die for the sins of mankind, Brother Chris, he died for the consequences of the sins of mankind. 
So the gospel is not for you and I to tell somebody that Jesus died for your sin and you can't be forgiven. That's not the gospel. That's what he did. The gospel is found in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and verse 15. The Bible says John the Baptist went to prison and Jesus surfaced. His ministry began to, began to emerge. And when his ministry emerged, he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And he told them, repent, for the kingdom of God is at your grasp. Yeah. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at your grasp. Repent. So you having the ability to grasp heaven's mindset is going to be directly proportional to you repenting. Right. Repentance does not mean for you to cry and moan about what you've done. Once you get born again, your sin has been washed by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Come on, somebody say amen. Once you get born again, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Look, all things have become new and all things are of God. Once you get born again, you have been reinstated your original position that God intended for Adam before he fell. Y'all got to give God your best praise right here. <laughs> repentance. Somebody say repentance. Repentance means it's the Greek word metanoi, which means that you have to associate with Jesus meta and then noi so he can deal with your head. Deal with the way that you think. So he wants you in the presence of Jesus, right? So that his mindset can become your mindset. Thus, repentance means to change the way you think. And once you change the way you think, it will affect how you live. Yeah. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at your grasp. God's way of doing things is at your grasp. Why is this message important for today? I'll tell you why. Because to all of our college students and every person that is in this building right here, you are going to school because you're trying to get some type of competence up under your belt so you can be able to earn a living or make a living or people even call it a career. But I want to pitch something to you. God never called you to have a career. God has a calling upon your life. He has a purpose in in you you have a reason for existence you're not here by happenstance and you're not here by chance come on you are here on God assignment it was the will of God that you would swim out of your father's loins into the embryo of your mother and that you would be born in such a time as this don't question God's purpose for your life come on somebody say amen, amen. repent somebody say repent God's way of doing things is at your grasp. Now, how does this kingdom operate? That's the issue because we have to know how the system works. This is what I'm saying here. Before we get into the principles, everything, and, and there's different principles. So like the kingdom of God is a principle-driven system. It's a principle-oriented system, right? So if you came from Canada and you came and crossed over the Ambassador Bridge and went through the tunnel and you were a citizen of Canada, when you came over to America, you would find that the laws that govern America are different than the laws that govern Canada. Laws and principles are the same thing, right? So laws are not there to control you. Laws are there to protect you. And laws are also there to yield a predictable outcome. See, that's what a law is, a predictable outcome. If I jump off of this step right here onto the floor, I engage a law that yields a predictable outcome. The law that I engage is the law of what? Gravity, right? And law of gravity says, hey, you're going to fall to the ground and bust your head if you jump off that. <laughs> right? Right? Once I engage that law, just like that natural law, that law of gravity, if I engage that, that law would work for me. The kingdom of God has laws. The kingdom of God has principles that if you will engage them, they will work for you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. The very first one we have to understand, how does this system work? How does this kingdom work? The kingdom of God functions off of the law of faith. This is the basis for how the kingdom works, the law of faith. As a matter of a fact, the kingdom is a new order of living by faith. Now, what is faith? Write this down. Faith is God dependency. Come on. 
Faith is God dependency. Somebody say that with me. Say faith is faith. God dependency. God. Now, if this whole system, this whole kingdom functions by faith, I need to understand how to get faith. So Romans chapter 10, verse 17, put that up there so they can see it. It says, so then faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? Word. So watch this. Faith is a supernatural force. Faith is fourth dimensional living. It's a supernatural force. Watch this. And it's born out of intimacy with God and or his word. Faith comes by hearing. Come on. And hearing by the what? The word of God. That word, word is the Greek word rhema. Somebody say rhema. It means the spoken word of God. So that means or that implies that when God speaks to you, packaged within what he speaks to you is faith to bring that thing that he spoke to you to pass. That's why hearing the voice of God is the most important endeavor of your life. Because if you can't hear the voice of God, you're in a dangerous position. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You have to hear him pertaining to who your wife is, who your husband is, right? Decisions that you have to make. And today, you have so many voices, so many voices. Instagram, TikTok, you got all these voices on Facebook telling you, go get this, follow your dreams, chase your dreams. None of them are telling you how to live from the inside out. They're all telling you how to govern your life from the outside in. They're telling you how to live opposite of faith. They're telling you how to live by pride, which is self-dependency. Right. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And see, you have to be very cautious about that because guess what? When you die, and guess what? Everybody's going to die. Hebrews chapter 9 says this right here. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. To be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord, right? So, so every person is going to face death. It should not surprise us. But here is the thing that we don't want to face. Standing before the great white throne judgment, right? Come on, somebody say amen, which is two judgments, or the judgment seat of Christ. The great white throne judgment is for those who are not born again. But the judgment seat of Christ is for those who are born again, but you're going to get rewarded based upon what you did in your physical body while you're here in this earth. So every single person is going to face death. But when you face death, the question is going to be, did I do what God put me here for? Did I obey his voice? Let's go even deeper. Did I even hear his voice so that I would be equipped with faith to obey his voice? Come on, somebody say amen. Because we're living in a time where there are multiple voices coming at you. And you'll be driven by your flesh. You'll be driven by your sensory mechanism. What you could touch, what you could taste, what you could see, what you could smell, what you can hear. And you'll be driven by that to produce in the earth. You don't want that. You want to know him. You want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Come on. You want to be conformed to the image of his death. You want to be like the Apostle Paul. You want to say these words. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I who live, but Christ lives in me. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Somebody say this whole kingdom is governed by the law of faith. How does faith come? Come on, how does faith come? And hearing by what? Okay. So next one. Without faith, everything in your life is absolutely impossible. This is why I tell people, I, I don't understand it. I tell people all the time, I said, listen, I said, my wife and I, Max, we do not make decisions based upon our conditions. We never do that. We make decisions being principle oriented. I don't give when I have it to give. I give because I understand that one of the primary laws of the kingdom of God is sowing and reaping, yeah. right? Just like God created trees and they provide uh, uh, for us and we provide for the trees. And if we don't give oxygen to the trees, right? Come on, somebody say, man, the trees will die. And if the trees don't give what it's supposed to give to us, we can die. That's called the law of reciprocity. It's a part of giving and receiving. 
It's one of the most primary laws in the kingdom of God. If you don't give, you can't expect to receive. If you don't plant a seed, you can't expect the harvest. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for this. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible. Hebrews 11 and 6, put that up there. I want you guys to read this with me. On the count of three, one, two, three. But without faith, it is what? Impossible. To please him. Now stop right there. In context, it's talking about faith puts you in agreeable terms with God. Faith does, right? How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So once you get outside of the vicinity of the word of God, Ron, you are outside of the sphere of faith. That's why Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it's what? Impossible. Come on. What's impossible? Your marriage, hold up. It's impossible to please him, but watch this. Your marriage is impossible without faith. Come on. Finding your purpose, discovering your purpose, impossible without faith. Come on, somebody say amen. We are living in times where things are seemingly impossible. And I can promise you this as a bona fide man of God. God himself is drawing a line between God dependency and dependency upon man. He's drawing a line. And in the days to come, you will be able to clearly see those who are trusting in him. In the days to come. Right? Amen? Without faith is what? Come on, without faith is what? Number two, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. I told you the whole kingdom functions off of faith. How does faith come? Come on, how does faith come? So it's important for you to hear God's what? Right? If you don't hear his voice, you don't have any vision. If you don't hear his voice, you don't have his vision. You don't know what you're here for. (laughs) Here it is. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Let's read that on the count of three. One, two, three. For we walk by and not by sight. Ah, look at that. So the word sight means sensory mechanism. He says you walk. The word walk is the Greek word peripatio. That word peripatio is speaking of perpetuality. It's talking about lifestyle or consistent behavior. So your behavior is going to reflect that you are in faith. And not that you are in sight. So sight in the Greek means sensory mechanism. What you could touch, taste, see, smell, and hear. So born again believers do not make their senses primary. Right? You're not moved by people that hate you. You're not moved by people that talk about you. Matter of fact, you don't want to be in one of the churches that all they do is talk about what people do to you. Right? Because we are here to redeem hurting humanity. Come on. We're not trying to make people our enemies. Y'all better say amen to this. We're not trying to make people our enemies. See, when you get over into faith, you start functioning like God functions. And God so loved the world that he gave his one begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have life everlasting. Once you get over into faith, you start walking in love. Walking in forgiveness. Come on, somebody say amen. You're not living according to your sight. Not just what you can see. You're not living according to your feelings or your emotions because you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're living and walking by faith. And people who walk by faith are people that walk in love. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. (laughs) Again, faith is the basis for how the kingdom of God functions. Faith is the lifestyle of the born-again believer, right? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Put that one up there. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. I'm almost done. He said, behold, his soul. That's speaking of your mind, your emotion, your will, your imagination, your intellect. His soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. So he's talking about pride. But the just, those who have been declared righteous. When you got born again, you have been declared righteous. Somebody say, when I got born again, I was declared righteous. So those who have been declared righteous, they live by his faith. Right? Lifestyle. Somebody say, faith is not a message. It's my lifestyle. Come on, say it again like you believe me. Say, faith is not a message. It's my lifestyle. It's how I live. I have to hear, come on, the voice of God 
on a daily basis. The Word of God is where the voice of God evolves from. So I have to stay in the Word on a daily basis. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Same thing, faith is our lifestyle. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first, also to the Greek, for therein or in the gospel of this kingdom is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Come on. You live by faith. Y'all hear me? You live by faith. Come on. You walk by faith. Come on. Every day you're hearing God's word and faith is coming to you, right? <laughs> Amen. This is how everybody lives. Everybody who is a born again believer. And see, that's where the, the controversy is. John, the controversy is, it lies right there because you can be born again and not living by faith. Yes, yeah, you can be born again, Phil, and not hear the voice of God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right? Job, Job chapter 33, verse 14. Put that up in the New Living Translation. That's not in my message, but I think this is a perfect spot to put this here. Job chapter 33, verse 14. Give our team a hand clap, guys. If you guys can move quickly with that. Job 33, verse 14. That way I can get ready to wrap this up. If I get it before they do, or they got it? There it is. There it is. Now, we're going to go to 15 and 16 also. Who's ever doing that? But I want you guys to see this right here. Read it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Do you guys, got the, you guys got the New Living Translation? New Living Translation. That's the one that I want. That's going to open it up a little bit. But, you, but it's clear there. Verse 14 tells you God speaks. Somebody say God speaks. God speaks. Okay. Now, let's look at this one right here. Let's read it. One, two, three. For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. Now, before we move to the next one, let me tell you why people don't recognize his voice. Are you ready for it? Because when you are living consistently in the flesh, governed by what you could touch, taste, see, smell, and hear, your sensory mechanism, watch this right here, your spiritual man doesn't have the ability to distinguish or discern the voice of God. Although he's speaking again and again and again and again, right? God will lead you away from health problems. God will lead you away from car accidents. Y'all better say amen to this. God will lead you away. Acts chapter 12, this is perfect right here. Acts chapter 12, the, the angel of the Lord intervened on behalf of Peter when Peter was incarcerated and then Herod had intentions to kill Peter the same way he killed James, but the church prayed. They positioned themselves to hear the voice of God. And there was one young lady who was praying so intently that as she prayed, Peter came, he had been delivered, and he knocked on the door. She opened the door and ran back into the room, not even having recognized it was Peter. They were so intentional about hearing the voice of God. God speaks how often? Again and again. He'll speak to you by what? Come on, in visions of night. When deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. Verse 16, this is the last one, verse 16. Verse 16. Y'all lost it? Give them another hand clap, y'all. They working on it. Is this helping anybody today? Amen. See, what we're doing here, I thought it was important to help you understand how you are to live as a born-again believer. See, born again, let me tell you something. Do you know you could be highly humanitarianistic and not in faith? Don't, don't mistake good works for faith. Because we live in a generation where people, they, that's, that's what they think about, good works. You know, like I, I'm going to earn my way with God. Yeah. Has nothing to do with salvation, right? Don't mistake good works for faith. 
Faith is a supernatural force born out of intimacy with God and or his word. That means that faith requires your attention. Faith requires your attention, right? If you're going to function and you're going to overcome in this hour, you're going to have to know how to work the system of the kingdom of God. And the primary law of the system of the kingdom of God is the law of faith. You live by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Come on, somebody say amen. You walk by faith and not by your senses. Come on, say amen again. Look what it says there in verse 16. Did they get it up there yet? Let's read it on the count of three. One, two, three. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. Now say this with me. Say, God is always speaking. But I have to develop my spirit so I can discern his voice. Ask yourself, just something real practical. Ask yourself, when was the last time you say, Holy Spirit, what is it that you desire from me? Because we're conditioned today in Western Hemisphere to always tell God what we are requiring from him. (laughs) Holy Spirit, what is it that you're requiring from me? Holy Spirit, where is it you want me to go to school? Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me and direct me into truth. Holy Spirit, what do you say about this relationship that I'm in? You got to weigh and measure yourself. Are the decisions that you're making pertaining to the relationships you're in, are they based upon the level of your thinking right there? Are you thinking more about fleshly desire? Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. This ain't popular nowadays. But if you're walking in the flesh, you cannot fulfill your potential. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this right here. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that means that when I get in the flesh, it stifles my faith. It stifles my ability to hear him, to follow him. Lord have mercy. Come on, give God your best praise right now. Hallelujah. We're going home. Faith partners you with God. What if I told you today that you have the ability to walk with God? To partner with God? See, I told you, you have the ability to live a fourth dimensional life. Right? Above, watch this right here. Above the limitations of this world. I have defeated the limitations of this world a hundred times over. My wife and I, we have defeated them a hundred times over simply by learning how to walk by faith. To walk by faith. Same challenges everyone else has. Right? right? Same conditions everyone else has, right? But going to the Word of God, right? Finding out what does God say about this situation? And then just cut and dry, engaging the Scripture with my behavior, with my action. That's what James chapter 2 and verse 17 says. It says, faith without works is dead being alone. So faith is not just a fact. Faith is an act. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Faith is acting on what God says. There's this story, and we're closing with this right here. There's this story in Mark chapter 5 of a woman had an issue of blood right? Raise your hand if you're in this room and you have an issue today. Any kind of issue. Let's be honest. Let's be transparent. This woman had an issue. Hers was an issue of blood, right? How long did she have her issue? She had it for 12 long years, right? Now what you have to do is you have to take, read the Bible in context, but what you have to also do is understand that whatever God does for one person, he'll do it for another one. God is not prejudiced, nor is he a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. I heard Smith Wigglesworth say that God will jump over a thousand people to get to one man or one woman that will live and walk by faith. One person that will trust him with his word. Come on, somebody say amen. Here is this woman. She's been ostracized not only from her family, but also from the population of people. She's not supposed to be in the population of people. 
And for years, I thought that the woman walked through the crowd, but she didn't walk through the crowd. When you study, you'll find out she crawled through the crowd. Thousands of people, and she was crawling beneath them at knee level, crawling through the crowd just to get to Jesus. Look at her intentionality. Look at her faith being expressed. How do we know it's faith being expressed? Because when she crawled through the crowd, she would say these words, probably sweat dripping off of her forehead. Her knees are hurting. Her hands are hurting. Ain't got no clean pavement and asphalt like we have today. They had rocks and hills and potholes and weeds and thorns and bushes. And she's crawling through the crowd in all of this terrain. And she's saying out of her mouth, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, if I can only get to Jesus and just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she got to Jesus and she grabbed the bottom of his talith, which was his prayer shawl. When she grabbed this prayer shawl, the Bible says in verse 30 that Jesus knew immediately that virtue had gone out of his body. What is virtue? Virtue is that fourth dimensional power of the Holy Spirit that'll get you free from any problem that you're going through in life. Come on, somebody say amen. That power of God is unlimited. That power of God is often untapped in the life of a believer. But today, you're going to learn how to live by faith work the system of the kingdom of God and tap that power of God for your life you won't be stopped you can't be stopped come on somebody say amen she grabbed that prayer shawl feel that virtue left the body of Jesus boom touched her and immediately she was whole and it came out of his body so forcefully that he said who touched me and they said, Lord, all these thousands of people are around you and you're wondering who touched you. He said, no, 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 not physical touch. Somebody got beyond their senses. They got over into the realm of faith. They put a demand on the kingdom of God and they touched me. Once they touch, once she touched Jesus, watch this right here. Verse 33, 34, the Bible says this right here. Daughter, your faith hath made you whole. Daughter, your faith hath made you whole. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. I came today to tell you, when you learn to operate the system of the kingdom of God by its primary law, the law of faith, regardless of how old you are. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Sarah was 99 years old. No, Abram was 99 years old. The Bible clearly states that Sarah was beyond the time where she had the ability naturally to have children. But something kicked in where Abram said, baby, let's go in the tent tonight. Lord have mercy, you looking good tonight. And they had Isaac when it was nearly 100 years old. Don't you let the devil tell you age has something to do with it. No, 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 no. You look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Faith has something to do with it. Come on, that's how the kingdom works. Come on, say that. That's how the kingdom works. Come on. You are supernatural. You've been created to live in that fourth dimensional realm, living and walking by faith. Last verse, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Put that up there. 1 John 5, verse 4, and we're going home right now. Stand to your feet. Come on, give the Lord your best praise, your best praise today. Hallelujah. Here it is. Ready? Whatsoever is born of God. Are you born of God? Raise your hand. Come on, whatsoever is born of God. Are you born of God? Come on, raise both your hands. Whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcome the world. Watch this. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even, come on, our... Come on, give God your best praise, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get to the place where if it's not in this book, you don't believe it. Come on, get to the place. God wants us to get to the place where when the doctor says sickness, we say, I don't believe that. See, we got Christians, we got theologians who don't believe in healing. You want to get to the place, watch this right here, that we believe what Jesus said. 
He said, in my name, they will what? Cast out devils. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. See, we want to get to the place where whatever is said to us, it has to go through the filter of faith. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. The filter of faith. Little quiz right here. How does faith come? And hearing by what? You live by what? You live by what? Watch this. If you're not living by faith, you're not living at all. Come on, say it again. If you're not living by faith, you're not what? Living at all, right? See, because born again believers, we live and we walk by faith. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bow your head. Bow your head. Close your eyes. All saints are praying if you're here today and you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. That's the first step of faith you have to take, right? That's the first step. If you're here today and you've never prayed and asked him to come into your heart, can you do me a favor? Slip your hands up. I want to pray with you. Is there anybody in the room? Just slip your hands up. I see. Is there anybody in the room? I thought I saw a hand. In Jesus' name, ushers, help me out. Anyone in the room, you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, and you're saying, Pastor, you're talking to me. Is that you? Slip your hand up. Is there anyone? How about this? You're in the room and you prayed. You asked Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life, but you got away from your fellowship and your relationship with the Lord Jesus, right? And you stop hearing his voice and you say, Pastor, today, I am here today because I want to restore my relationship with the Lord Jesus. If that's you, slip your hand up. Is there anybody in the room? Come on, slip your hand up. I see that hand back there. Usher, just help me out. I see that hand right there. Come on, is there anyone else? Listen, don't wait for your friends to raise their hands. If you know the Spirit of God is talking to you and you know that he is convicting your heart, then you need to raise your hand. If you are here and you prayed that prayer before, but you got away from your fellowship with him and you're saying, Pastor, I need to restore my relationship. Slip your hands up again. Is there anybody in the room? I see that hand. I see that hand back there. Anyone else in the room? Anyone else in the room? Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm good with my relationship with God, but, but I need a church family and I feel God's presence here and I want to be a part of a growing church that can help me become the person that God created me to be. If you're here today and that's you, can you slip your hand up? Is there anyone in the room? I see that hand back there. I see, anyone, any other hands in the room? I see that hand right there. Anyone else? Here's what I want you to do. If you raise your hand for salvation, if you raise your hand to rededicate salvation, if you raise your hand to be a part of this church family, do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Take a bold step of faith. Step out of your aisle, into, uh, out of your seat, into the aisle, and come down here and meet me in Jesus' name. Come here, babe. Come on, let's do better than that, y'all. Give them a hand clap as they come. Come on. If you raise your hand, college students, if anybody raise your hands, encourage them to come on down. Now listen, let me say something right quick. More people raise their hands. If you raise your hand, just come on down. Let us pray for you today. If you raise your hand, come on down. Matter, matter of fact, if you did not raise your hand, but you know you were supposed to raise your hand, come on, let's give them a hand clap, y'all. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to move forward, but I really believe with all my heart. There's five more people here. I know that. I know that. Five more people here. And, and you know, some people tough. They just fight the anointing. Amen. And we're not, listen, we're not trying to put you on front street. We're trying to get you helped. We're trying to get you to a place where you can obey the voice of God. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, that was me. I should have raised my hand. Can you do yourself a favor? Step out in the aisle and come on down here and meet us down here. Is there anybody else? In Jesus' name. Well, let's give them a hand clap by faith, y'all. I believe in God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, can you guys turn around and face me and my wife? Raise your hands. 
and just pray this simple prayer. But I want you to pray it with boldness. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I also believe you died on the cross. You were buried. You rose on the third day. And you rose having all power, all authority to forgive all sin, including my sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Cleanse me. And make me new. And from this moment forward, by your grace, I will serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So awesome. God bless you, men of God. Yes, sir. God bless you, dear. What's your name? Siobhan. Siobhan. What's your name, dear? Iana. Huh? Iana. Iana. Okay. Uh, Iana, Siobhan, men of God, turn to the right. See this young lady right here? She's going to take you to an area. She's going to give you some information that's going to be pertinent for your faith. Amen. Okay. Same instructions that I had to follow. And every person that is a disciple have to follow these instructions. Okay. okay. Thank Amen. You. Thank give me a hand clap as they go, guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Remember, how does faith come? Hearing. Hearing. How often does God speak? All the, time. All the time. Can I tell you something? God has something to say. Make sure they can hear me. He has something to say about every decision that you are attempting to make. Right? Counseling offices are filled with people who did not hear the voice of God. Learn how to develop their spirit to follow the voice of God. Right? It's not an age thing. This is an intimacy thing. Right? Right? Is that all right? Amen. I love you guys so much on behalf of my wife and I, Pastor Darius, and all the college students. Amen. Give the college students a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Darius. Amen. 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 Can we give God one more praise for the word? Hallelujah. And so this wraps up our service, but I want to make a announcement to all the students, all the students, all students, college students. Uh, we want you to go right upstairs to the fellowship hall lounge. We have food for you, all the scholarship recipients. Uh, we're going to have your scholarship for you in the back too. Okay, so college students, please go right up there, uh, right upstairs uh, to the fellowship hall. We got food for you. All right, we are dismissed. Wow, that was an amazing message. I hope that that blessed you as much as it blessed me. If you gave your life to Christ today after that powerful message, I want you to let us know in the comments so that once again, we can connect with you and show you the next steps that you can take in your relationship with God. I hope that today blessed you. I hope you feel empowered this week and I cannot wait to see you guys next week. And hey, next time, next week, come visit us in person. I promise you will be so blessed you will love it we would love to see you at our 11 a.m service right here in ipsy i'll see you guys next